Hello and welcome to this walkthrough of the new Launch Control X Control Surface script for Ableton Live. A control Surface script that extends the usage of the Novation Launch Control, a powerful little utility MIDI controller that we've added some extra depth to. Now when you download, uh, you'll get a zip file, which I'm showing here. Uh, within that, you'll find a user guide, which will take you through the installation. But just to quickly show you how that works, within the Live 9.6 folder, you'll find two folders, the underscore isotonic and the launch control X. You need to install that into your application of Ableton Live. In this case, I'm using Live 9.6.2. Now on a Mac, there's one extra step, and that's that you have to show package contents first, and then within the contents, application resources, and MIDI remote scripts is where you need to drag these two to. And once you've done so, you can close and effectively restart live. Once you've restarted live, go to your preferences and select the launch control X script and the input and the output to the launch control. Please ensure though that you don't have another control surface selected for the launch control as standard as this may well cause issues and conflicts. Now, now you'll know that the script has been successfully installed when you select that script because you'll see the on screen red box. Effectively, the red box which moves around your set left and right when you're in factory mode one, or if you move to factory mode two, which also offers clip launching, effectively, you can then move anywhere around your set. Now the main reason that we wanted to add uh, the launch control to our lineup, uh, apart from our long-standing relationship with Novation, is the fact that we could add something extra to the user modes. In selecting user mode six, we now have device control on the first eight and the second eight Go to the first bank as such. So you then have further control on one easy controller. Now, because Ableton's paradigm is to design device control uh, mappings in eights at a time, when you start working in, in 16s, then sometimes the mappings uh, don't make as much logical sense. However, Every user of Ableton Live is different, and one of the benefits of it is purely and simply how modular it can be in its approach. In which case, we've also added in our predator functionality. Now, how that works is very simple. Uh, you would select your version of Live, select the controller that you want to edit the map for, and select in this case, the device. As you can see, the standard mapping, which is represented here, takes you up to about the fifth control before you move on to fork. Yet there's a number of other controls within the mallet section that don't fit in the first eight. And maybe it's the OCD in me, but I'd like to know that the mallet is on the first, the fork starting on the second, etc., etc. So if I wanted to add, uh, let's say, the velocity and key for the stiffness of the mallet, uh, all I need to do is change that to the velocity, that to the key, and perhaps the key of the noise, uh, noise key. Then a simple send to live. And now my first five do as they did and then I have control over the rest of the mallet elements that I want. And I can, of course, do the same across here. Now, this is a relatively simple uh, 
instrument, device, etc. Uh, it doesn't particularly have any hidden parameters, but if you check out some of the Max for Live devices that Ableton have been putting out recently, there's the magnificent Bengal for Max for, Max for Cats, which you've got a great deal of control of the, uh, the modular-esque or semi-modular, as it's being described, FM synthesizer over the first eight macros. But when you look at the uh, what's going on under the hood, pff, wow, there's still quite a lot of other controls there that effectively only have, if we go to user number six and control bank one, ah, one of one. So there aren't any other controls. You've got a few that are in there, but that's where Predator actually comes into its own. Because it's more for actually creating maps around stuff that you can't get at necessarily. So instead of live, I'm going to pick Max for Live, and I've got some of the, the Max for Live devices that I've created maps for in here. And Bengal, as you can see, as we know it to be macro 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you've got a few controls there. Now, as you can see, that seems to be the limit of all that you can map. But if I change standard to extended, I now have every modulatable control that I'm able to then select and give control to through the Predator script. So it really enables me to, to use this as a kind of a, a, a plug out controller for some really detailed Max for Live devices and VSTs and AUs as well. Now within the VS, VSTs, we've been working hard recently to add functionality for various multi-map things like complete, uh, uh, that kind of thing. We'll be working more based on user requests on those. You can also change the names of any of the uh, mapped device, uh, mapped parameters, especially for uh, the push or the push to screen. Also within Predator, it gives you easy access to the config file. Now the config file itself, if we go to Finder and back to our installation of the script, Contents, app resources, uh, MIDI remote scripts, launch control X. You'll find a config text in here, which when edited and restarted live will give you a number of different options which are detailed in the manual. You can also change them from here, which includes different ways of taking over the controller to show a certain number of returns permanently. Uh, the max number of returns that this will actually move across to, how the tracks move around. So you could move at two scenes, two tracks, sorry, two tracks at a time, or eight tracks, or just the one. Whether the eighth channel actually becomes the master uh, track control, and whether the Predator itself auto scans multi mapped VSTs as you drop them in. The final one is the log, which we've uh, developed in there to help support people who are having issues uh, that get in contact with us through the, the website on the contact page. The other element of compatibility that we wanted to build in was the fact that this is a tiny portable controller could make a, a really good companion to say an Ableton push or if it's the same form factor, maybe a, a Novation launch pad above it. So you've got the launch pad to, to fire off clips and you could control the pans, etc., etc. Now you don't want to be moving left, right and center uh, on two controllers. So with our launch sync uh, series, you can set that up so that the launch control or any other of the supported controllers becomes the master and then the slave controller can follow the launch control around, uh, can sit below it, can be the right or the bottom right. It can react to two-way communication, so perhaps you want to move the launch control, but you might also want to move the push and they'll follow each other. It, effectively, what it does is it allows you 
to sync, in this case the yellow box, but as Ableton themselves call it, the ring focus box, it allows you to follow that round. Now, one of the other pieces of functionality within the LaunchSync Pro device is the ability to create encoder mappings, which as this device could map automatically to 16 at a time, you can then map potentially to the uh, filter being in the uh, in each track. And as your red box moves around, then the mappings follow. So enabling you to have effectively dynamic mappings as you move around the set. Really simplistic upgrade, but giving a great deal of extra power to the launch control. I mean, you can pick these up pretty cheaply now. And even if you look on eBay, you're gonna get them even cheaper. Um, but certainly a great little controller with some added features, giving it that X touch, courtesy of our lead developer, Sigabalt. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please get in touch through the website, www.isotonicstudios.com. Cheers.